Uh, bonjour à tous. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today for this panel organized by Unifrance to celebrate French animation films, short films in competition as South by Southwest. It's a interpretation is available uh, if you want to click on the so button uh, with the little world icon so you can hear this panel in English. Uh, merci à vous trois. Thank Donc, you, all three of you, for being here today to have this conversation. My name is Céline Rouston. I'm programmer for American Film Festivals and associated to the South by Southwest merci Film Festival. So thank you all for being here today. Maybe we can go around the table. If you want to introduce yourself, give the name of your film, present it briefly, talk about your distributor and the production company. So I will begin, says Melanie. Hello, thank you for inviting me. My name is uh, Melanie Robert Tourneur. I directed the film Hold Me Tight, and it is uh, premiering uh, around the, the world today. It is produced by Vivi Film in Belgium and La Clairière in France, distributed by Mew Production. And that's it. It's a very short film, in fact, uh, which uh, speaks about uh, predation or relationships you can have or in uh, love encounters, sensual encounters you can have. Uh, and this is something that I've observed around me, and I thought it was natural. But in fact, uh, so that's. I really, what I wanted to do is to uh, talk about it. It's about the narration. It's uh, not, it's a pity. It's really made to be shown in uh, cinemas. So it's a pity it cannot be shown uh, currently, but I hope this will happen soon. Julie, would you like? Hello, my name is Julie Cathy. I am the director of the film called Normal, produced and distributed by Sacre Bleu Productions. And Normal speaks about our relation to the world and consumption and uh, perhaps a desire to change things, which is not an easy task. This is what it speaks about, really, the story it tells. And I think that's it for me. So, what should I do? Introduce myself in French or English? In French. My name is Reza Riai. I'm Iranian and I'm presenting my film Navozons the, Le Musicien, The Musician. The film was written in 2014. And uh, so it was a while ago. And I showed it to a producer called Hélène Ron, an American producer who lives in France. So we worked together on the project and I left it aside for a while when I was an artistic director on a feature film. And so it took some time to start the project really and we finished in 2020. It was just the beginning of the COVID pandemic. We were not very lucky for that. And the premiere of the film was in Toronto, and the film speaks about a love story between two people in the 13th century, and that's it. And where? what's the distributor? Miyu. I still have a question for directors working in animation, because for me, it's uh, something quite unimaginable. What took you to this area, to this field of animation, and with the drawings, and uh, but the films as well? So perhaps you want to answer in the order you like. For me, it took time for me to get to animation. I'm an illustrator and I'm a graphic artist in the beginning and I love films. I'm really a film buff. So I think for a while, I'm such a film buff that I really uh, 
impeded myself and forbid it, forbid myself from going uh, to, to that to cinema. And uh, therefore, I thought perhaps I could do uh, animation films. And this is how I got there. So as for me, I was in, I'm Belgian and I did my studies in Saint-Luc, that's the high school. And uh, it was an artistic school, I drew a lot. And I had never really asked myself what I would do later. And I had a friend uh, whom we did a lot of drawing together. And somebody said, oh, one day I'm going to do animation films. And uh, this friend who uh, is also working in animation, Laura, she's a director. One day we visited a, a school together. I studied there and she studied in Brussels, but we went to visit the school together and I really, we both uh, decided that's what we wanted to do. I don't know if it's the right choice because it's a, a difficult one, but, uh, but that's my life now and I'm happy. What are you, what did you, yeah, what made you uh, start in animation? In fact, that was the question. You mean animation is difficult because of the COVID? No, I think it's difficult in, a, in a, the large meaning. It takes a lot of energy to put a project together for uh, results that appear only uh, after a long time, and it's quite alienating. So, of course, it depends on the technique, but I use the traditional techniques, which take a really extensive times. I may be not efficient and I need a lot of time. So sometimes I feel I don't want to complain. Of course, I love my job, but it's, it's sort of a curse, so to speak. I totally agree with you. It's a virus, says Melanie. Yes, uh, says uh, Reza. It takes a lot of time to find the financing for your film. And uh, it also takes a lot of time to direct. So the question was, what led me to animation? OK. Animation in general, I studied painting. And I uh, did some caricatures for a long time. And I, I was missing uh, music, rhythm, and uh, uh, all of that, because in painting, an image, there's no time lapse, no beginning, no end, and I, that's what I needed. I needed a beginning and an end, and to stage something, to direct something. So I was an art director for a while, and Sorry, you, the sound is not very good sometimes. Melanie, to come back to what you said, you find animation is quite solitary. It depends when. There are so many different steps. At times, you can feel very lonely. As a director, I felt lonely at times, and but sometimes very well surrounded, supported, and. Uh, in fact, there are little means to uh, find money from productions to develop the project, and we don't have uh, the means to hire people, and sometimes we feel lonely, but when the production uh, uh, is set up, uh, there are more people, and that's really exciting. It brings energy. It was so difficult for me to find uh, funds for the film. It was very, very long. But when I found the producer, I think even after that, it took me four years to make the film because it was uh, not, re it was a hard film to defend. It was my first one. And once we had the production uh, going, uh, there were people, and uh, I, uh, once I started, I was almost uh, completely drained uh, from my energy. But uh, then the other people from the team brought new energy in, which was very stimulating. And uh, I didn't feel uh, so lonely. 
but uh, yeah, in the beginning and the very end, uh, it, we weren't delayed too much, but I know some animation film are delayed. It takes, because there's a, it's complicated, there's no money in the end and they can be very lonely and that's heavy to deal with. But uh, I would say it depends on people, depends on your technique. What is, yeah, from an author's point of view, of course, we're very lonely in the beginning. It's just like life. In the meantime, you meet people who work on the film, but I totally agree with you. I think I feel that I'm quite supported and surrounded by people at every step of the project and the work. I have a lot of uh, friends, uh, I ask people's opinions. Uh, I really, but I know a lot of uh, directors who don't necessarily do that and they don't uh, work in the same way and they're very solitary uh, from beginning to end. So that's, I, I feel really lonely at, especially at the beginning of the pro production. Yes, um, Melanie and Reza, have you worked with the animators who helped you get your project going or have but it's not my case so i'm in a very lonely tunnel but i think i appreciate it in a way i like it so the message in your film was that with marx the character of marx it, it is meaningful in fact <laughs> what you're saying is meaningful it's, yeah, the anti-capitalistic uh, vision. Yeah, I, I did get some money, I have to admit, in fact. <laughs> so it's true that we have three completely different films. Reza's film is a sort of a love story, an epic uh, historical love story for Julie. It is what happens in our minds today. And for Melanie, it's uh, all about the atmosphere. It's not really a narration. It's about the feelings uh, uh, created by the film. And I wanted to know the genesis of the film. There's a question I always ask, uh, what comes first, an image from the film, the visual aesthetics, the story, uh, and when, during the writing of the script, do, does the drawing approach begin, and when are you trying to develop uh, the, word, the, the script format, so to speak? So in fact, the image or the, the script, I think it depends on the film. For normal, it's normal. It's a very spontaneous with the, the voice off. It, uh, the idea came up uh, during a concert, a very small room, and I took some notes uh, on the corner of a table. And then I just have the beginning of the narration and I built it because it just made me laugh and I thought uh, I wanted to do something with uh, with those elements and this is what it came from really this is how it appeared at times I have uh, I do have an image in my mind but I need to develop it I have to admit that the graphic part is beautiful and painful at the same time. The writing is also painful for me, but the graphic part is something I like, the fact of associating or finding the image corresponding to the subject and not having a predefined style as an illustrator might have. And I just adapt my uh, stories to a, the style. So in fact, each time, it's, I'm really racking my brains out because it, it's like giving birth to this baby, this project, to find the graphic um, aspect. I don't know if you had finished or if I'm cutting you off. No, go ahead. Yes, for the graphic part and the research, that's, part, that's my favorite part, in fact. Uh, 
and I I don't animate the characters. I'm, I don't know how to draw well enough. Uh, I'm being very negative, but uh, I don't. that's the part I don't really like. What I enjoy is uh, uh, setting up uh, different worlds, and uh, this is something that I enjoy, even though it might, it is complicated to create a whole universe uh, that is uh, coherent. And sometimes I have an idea, an intention that comes first, and I say, this is what I want to talk about. Sometimes it's blurry and not well defined, but I'll choose uh, words, uh, abstract uh, intentions, ideas that I, I, I'm the only one to understand, really. And then I uh, write a first version of the script, uh, and then I write about the concept, and I look at the intentions over, uh, and when I get bored and I don't want to uh, think too much, I create some images that come that spring up in my mind, and it's quite organic. It was difficult for the first uh, film because I was really experiencing what I was writing at the same time and uh, I, it, I was in total identification to the project and I couldn't step back and have a distance and that was difficult so perhaps it, I think that one of the most difficult parts as an author is to assume your film and, and accept that this is the story you're telling and uh, not add a complicated symbolic uh, to it. Once uh, it's out on the screens, people can interpret it as they like, really, and they do what they want of it. But I think it's easier now that I have my first experience and I, I have more distance, I can step back and look at it. And I was also in a residency in Denmark, which was very helpful at the Enclume, it's called. And I was forced to write. Uh, people said, don't go to animatics now, spend time writing and uh, Sometimes animators want to create their images immediately, quickly, because that's their language, the visual aspect, and we're not trained to write scripts. So maybe it's boring for some of the directors and animation films, but I remember having been obliged to write and write, but I think it was the best solution and you lose much less time afterwards even though it can be boring at times. I think it's important to really spend time on the writing part and maybe write about concepts or parts of storyboards, but uh, unless it's a very instinctive film, I don't know, I'm just speaking for myself. It can be very different from others, for others, of course. Yeah, it's diff different for everyone. For the films, uh, uh, I worked on each time it was completely different. Some of them were extremely visual. Some of them it was all about writing. And for Nevozon, the musician, it was, uh, I had stories uh, in the back of my mind and uh, mus music also as well in my head. And I tried to imagine uh, a story with that. Those were the, the basics for me, even if I don't really use the music, in fact. Uh, but it's there in the beginning. It helps me uh, imagine things. Then I go back and forth between uh, drawings, uh, uh, music, writing, uh, and going back and forth between all of these uh, And sometimes I concentrate more on the visual aspect. And then if the story is uh, good enough, I can continue. So what triggered the, the story of Navazonde, the musician? For Navazonde, what triggered it? I think um, several things, in fact. I don't know if I remember exactly. I was listening to uh, some music with the instrument for the Kamanch from a very famous musician. 
a very famous musician who gives a lot of concerts and I listen to a, a piece of music that lasts for 30 minutes. It was uh, going up and down, uh, violin, soft, everything at the same time. And I listened to it uh, nonstop. And this really gave me inspiration for the film. I think that was the first, uh, the starting point, really. It was the music. Then concerning the story, it comes from somewhere else. But I think the first thing was really the music, which is, of course, very important in this as particular story. Yes. Now I want to talk about business more than the technical aspects. What is your experience concerning production companies? Uh, with your ideas uh, in the beginning, how do you go from something very personal in your mind that you have written perhaps, or you have ideas of how to make it visually? And then how do you go from that point to uh, the production part? How did you meet with your producers? And how did everything uh, begin? I think you quickly talked about the financing or financial aspects, but maybe uh, there's a really a, an encounter, a meeting with your producers. Uh, I had written in 2014, I had two ideas, in fact, for my uh, end of study film. And it was the other film that I chose to direct. And for this film, I had a meeting with people at the end of the, my studies and uh, I showed my file, I talked about the intentions and I met my producer at the time, uh, really at the end of uh, my studies. And after that, I think she really, she just really trusted me. And that's how we worked on a second project together. We're, we're, I think our, it's going to last for a long time. She, she is someone extremely brilliant, intelligent, and it's important when a producer has knowledge, has real knowledge. He's someone who goes uh, and watch a lot of films, has a huge culture and uh, someone who can trust you. That's also crucial. And I met uh, several directors who have had difficulties to communicate with uh, their producers because they don't feel any trust relationship. And sometimes they have to discuss on the writing, the, the images. I didn't have that uh, issue at all. And I, but I have witnessed those types of problems around me, people experiencing those issues. And for me, it was really crucial to find the person who I would trust, and there's a mutual trust and who would help me push me. And even if it's not perfect, uh, the trust is there and they understand and know how to communicate with you. And for you, Julie, for normal, it was almost easy, I could say, almost, meaning that I had already directed a first film with the Sacre Bleu Productions, so I knew the producer well. And when I offered this project, he had just seen a draft, really, and uh, I, I asked, are you interested in this uh, project? And he said, why not? So since we were, we were really used to working together, I didn't uh, mention it before. It was difficult to find the financing for it because it, uh, it uh, was scary to many because it was a little loony, but I Arte positioned itself at some point and uh, they really wanted the film to exist, uh, which uh, brought trust, more trust. Ron trusted me, of course, there was no problem there, but it strengthened the idea that this film 
could exist and needed to exist. So it's always a complicated story to put things in place, to get them on the tracks, uh, to be really in production actively, and especially when we are at the beginning of a career. It's my case, at least, and I believe it's also Melanie's uh, case, if I understood well. You, I think you all mentioned it, but Julie, you said that the first idea came during a night at a bar and you started writing on the, on the, at the bar or corner of a table. And I just wanted to know when did the first idea come up and when did the date, uh, what date did the film finish to know exactly when the first idea sprung up and uh, it was done. It was in 2011 for me. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't just do that in the time, but I, I think that, yes, it came up in 2011. It wasn't the same format. It was more of a, a children's film, but the film grew as I grew up and uh, it evolved, and I guess my own relation to sexuality, my rela meeting with people, the predatory aspect, it was very difficult. And uh, I didn't feel very legitimate. I had studied for two years, but I came out of the school when I was 21 or 22 years old. I try to do things, but it didn't work. Uh, I did things at home. I, I didn't feel ready to go meet with producers or contacted them, so I did it. I was in residency several times, and then I, I tried to make I came back to the idea of making films after having abandoned. And then I went to Denmark. I prepared my file, my dossier. And then I, I thought it would be difficult to find producers. But in fact, it's not so complicated. What's complicated is to find the money. Finding producers is OK. So after I found the producers, they changed their minds. It was chaotic So, to, because I didn't know how things worked. I wasn't really ready to carry my film completely. And it was difficult to communicate with producers. We didn't know who would be have the majority or not. Uh, in terms of shares for the film but uh, so we got the money very late and in the end i'm glad it took so much time because if we didn't have that uh, much time it would be a really bad film it would have been an ultra problematic film difficult film with which would have sent messages that i'm really not attached to anymore and uh, in the meantime, I've uh, had time to learn more and to understand uh, what I'm telling, what I want to tell, and to make the right choices. It's a bit like in the film, in fact. Yes, it's interesting what you said in the beginning. The time you work, you wary waiting for the product to mature, and you're when, while you're waiting for the financing, but we're always uh, pushed to learn uh, about uh, other things. And, and I guess you, it was 2011. For me, it was 2014. So that's quite a while ago. And, uh, and uh, people my age now have made uh, 10 films already. Not their first short film like me. So it's really a desire to tell stories, uh, not talking about the technique. Uh, in animation, it just takes a lot of time. You need to find your graphic style also. That could take a lot of time as well. And sometimes we just don't have the time. We just had an 
had an idea a really long time ago in school, perhaps, and we're just recycling the, the this theme or story. The next project I'm work well, I have several projects uh, in the pipeline, but uh, there's one I'm working on, and of course. I need to find the money now. Me too. So I'm going to self-finance it, they said, uh, both of them. Yes, me too. So yes, is that the future of film to self-finance uh, your films? I, yes, I already did a lot of things myself, and I think I'm going to continue on those tracks because I don't want to wait for two years, three years to make a short film. I understand for a feature film, of course. But for a short film, it's uh, just too much. I think two years is, okay, is all right, in fact. Yeah. Yes, no, from the idea to the end. That's okay to spend two years on it. Yes, it already takes time to write, to and uh, there are commissions. Sometimes you have changed things. Uh, but after the two years, there's the production. So it easily takes four years. What about self-financing? Would that allow you to have more control on the timeline, on the time that it takes? And would it have an impact on your creation? Would you be more free? Do you want to be freer? Would you like to have other people to collaborate with on a, an artistic level? I don't know how to do the animation part, so it's just not that I don't like. I don't like it. I not that I just don't know, but I like this position of being the director. Well, I think I like to gather people together and say, oh, you're really good at that and you're going to do this. You are excellent at that. Please come in and do something else. And that's what I like to do, collaborating with people, finding this uh, complementary aspect and working with people just as if I was working with actors, uh, explaining about the intentions. Uh, <laughs> So that's really something I enjoy while I work. But if I'm self-financing it, I think it'll be even more complicated. But I like working in groups. Yeah, work, group work, teamwork. Self-financing means you need to work on the side. So it's a trap in a way because you need to bring in the money from somewhere else, from another source because money just doesn't uh, fall from the sky. <laughs> In terms of freedom, I guess if I wasn't making films with the uh, producers or finding good the good producers I found, maybe I wouldn't dare doing things as I'm doing them now, because I think at some time you need to be guided but uh, i think that's new now i like to do things on my own but in the past i really had to work with the uh, deadline residencies uh, it really helped me to create a framework for for my work but the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do it more myself. So we have to talk about festivals. You, did you want to add something, Cathy? Uh, Julie, sorry. For festivals, so all of your films are at different points in their career. There's, you have a film, uh, Julie, that is a, uh, oh, no, it's for Reza, no, Cathy, you have a film that's on for the Oscars in Australia. Yes, I had one in Australia, but now I just won the prize of best animation in temper. <laughs> Clermont, Tempe, Now you're so everywhere around the world, really. 
Have you been able to be present in one of the festivals or was it only virtual? Only virtual. I wasn't able to go because, I, but I'm always too optimistic. And uh, selections in, are done in September or October. And I was working on other things. So I thought, okay, I'll still have time for the selections. And then the time flew by. So I never saw my film in the movie theaters. And the film was born exactly at the end of February 2020. So it had a, a very nice COVID life. It's exactly like mine, says Reza. Perfect uh, timeliner. So as you said, your film was born during the COVID. So of course, when you go to a festival, it's to see your film on a big screen and uh, have people together, but we're just not going to stay at home. That's what we're doing now, of course. But were you able to discuss with people? Because, of course, you having your film shown on a big screen is great, but were you able to communicate, to have some feedback? Of course, you won some prizes, so your film is successful, but uh, did you get direct feedback? Yes, I have a, a lot of new Facebook friends. And there's something funny, which is that after a certain age, people ask me to become their friends, but I have a lot of uh, teenagers who are sending me uh, hearts and very cute messages. And in reality, of course, I would prefer being present in a festival. At home, it's the, not as funny. Partying, we need to party. That's something I really miss. That, I guess that's the only thing, so I'm quite lucky. But in fact, I think that the organizers of the film festivals make it possible for us to communicate with uh, different directors, to communicate with the audience as well. So it internationalizes things very much. And I believe, I don't know, perhaps the links that we establish will be perhaps longer lasting in the end because uh, it's nice even though this, 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 it's difficult. Yes, the advantage of this situation is the films are more accessible by a greater number of people because we don't have the constraints of the traveling, for instance. And maybe there's a greater audience. What about you, Reza? Your film had a, its premiere in Toronto. Toronto. So what happened uh, since and now it's a middle career in festivals? What happened? Uh, you said that it's a COVID uh, film <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, what is your experience? Yes, uh, that was quite unlucky. We finished it in February and uh, we were selected in Cannes for what was it? Um, I forgot what the section of the festival for the critique or the quinzaine. So I really wanted to go there, but it was cancelled. So the fortnight. And so we sent it to other festivals. I, I didn't go, but we were selected in another festival. And uh, it went pretty well, actually. We worked a lot on the music. Uh, I went to Tehran to rework uh, with musicians. We really added a lot of details, uh, subtleties in the music that you can't hear in the 
version that you have on a screen uh, on your computer. Uh, you, so you always see and hear better in uh, theaters, movie theaters. And for this film, there were a lot of efforts uh, made uh, around the music, but nobody could hear it for the time being. So, so yeah, it's a COVID film, as we said. Here we go. I think we, in August or September, yeah, that's when it started, I think, yeah. So what about you, Melanie? It's just the beginning. It's your second uh, selection in, in one in Belgium, one internationally. Yes, the first national in uh, Belgium, uh, which was online. Is it your first film as well? Yes. So it's the very beginning. And what a beginning. Yeah, it's a bit sad because Anima is at home. It's my country. We go there every year. And each year we see friends there who are showing their films. And last year, it was just before the COVID. So it took place. And uh, I, was, I, it, I said, OK, next year my term. But it didn't happen. But we met with the team and they broadcast the uh, listings directly on Facebook. Uh, and it was funny. We looked at the Palmares, the awards, and, and we try not to be too isolated. So there's, yes, the, the festive aspect that is, uh, yes, we try to be a little festive anyway, to be to party. And for Zagreb, it will be shown in Zagreb also. It's been selected, and I hope it will take place. It's planned for the month of June. I know that last year uh, they had uh, tried to do everything so to delay it so it would take place. And so perhaps that's what's going to happen. I hope I will be able to go. It's one of my favorite fe film festivals. I go there often. And I hope it will be the occasion to see the film on a big screen, because we also try to create an atmosphere that is immersive, surrounding. And I'd love to see what it really looks like. Immersive, that's exactly what I wrote in my uh, programming notes. Yeah, that's the whole objective, to create an immersive film. And your film, since it is not uh, really na a narrative film. When we saw it, we all had different reactions and we all perceived different things. So what was, did you have any contact with the, the audience and reactions? I saw it in different conditions and it's true when the conditions are almost those of a theater, movie theater. I, I was in Lille, in fact, and for the final export part, and we had a, a screening, and the room, uh, it was, a, I think we were about 10 people because we were respecting the social distancing, and uh, it was dark, the sound was not that, not bad, and it's quite different from when you watch it on your computer screen. It, it really catches you. It's, uh, it's stronger, yeah, on a big screen. And uh, the size of the screen plays a role, but it's being in the dark and the sound is very important as well. Because I already watched it on smaller screens and uh, the effect was present. But generally, when you watch a film in the right conditions, it's different. I believe that when people watch it on a computer, it's just like watching a video clip with the music. Uh, but I think when you watch on a big screen, something different um, emerges and is created. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't happen on computer screens. I remember when we watched it for the first time, I said, OK, we have to watch it again. 
it's like uh, the roller coaster. I thought, oh, it's too short. Six minutes is really short, and there's a lot of information. Um, and usually people uh, do that and want to watch it again. So that's the feeling I wanted to create also. Yeah, that's one of the advantage of uh, the virtual aspect. We can watch it as many times, but for the programmers, we watch films on our computers at home most of the time with the lights on. And it's true that when we can have access to festivals, that when we're able to see the films we have pro had programmed, we just rediscover them on the big screen. And seeing them on the big screen, of course, is something that we don't have nowadays. But I all wish you to have that and see the, your films on a big screen. So this is almost the end. I wanted to ask you if you have projects on which you're working, ideas uh, after this uh, year spent at home. <laughs> so I'm working on a short film, as I said, that I co-wrote. I'm going to direct it probably this year. Last year, I was a director on part of a documentary film and I was doing the animation part, and uh, that was uh, very enjoyable. I think I'm going to continue to see if I can uh, do the sh shooting and animation, the shots, and that's it for me. We'll see. So you said you worked on a documentary film. Is it different? Are there important differences. In fact, it was an American director who contacted me to create the animations for his documentary film. There was a 40 minute film. So I created something. I worked a lot on it. What was different and that really struck me was that for documentary film, it was something he had made. He had recorded voices, so we edited the sound on it and we had to find images for them. It was the story of a young Mexican man, Mexican guy. So I did the animatics, the storyboard, and uh, we did two months of production. And in fact, he changed totally the end of the film, so we had to change the animatics as well, and that never happened to me. Imagine how difficult it is uh, when they change that uh, during the film. And so they changed the animation, really. So it was, I, it never happened uh, to me before. You have less control on the story as well. Yes, because the person is there. It was a documentary film on him. We couldn't lie. In the end, we added an episode. We changed the animation with a lot of stress, in fact. What about you, Judy? I have several ongoing projects, a short film that is at the its beginning. Its theme is uh, in the same line as what I did before, ecology, transhumanism. And I am also working on a feature film that's a, an order by Sacre Bleu. It's for an animation. Oh, it's from a cartoon. And I'm working with someone uh, called Boranger, a scriptwriter. And 
I wanted to create a hierarchy to say what I would start with. And since uh, I'm getting used to the job, I have to organize myself. And you talked about documentary films, Reza, and uh, in animation, that is uh, something I've been interested in for a long time because documentary films is really interesting. It's a really interesting type of cinema. And I think you can do quite incredible things with documentary films. Uh, so I, I do have a project of that kind in mind. And you, since you mentioned documentaries, uh, the image is frozen. I want to make an experimental documentary film, kind of mixed with fiction, and it is also, I think there's a, a glitch. We can hear you, but uh, your image is frozen. Yes, for me too, says Céline, but we can hear you, so you, now we can't. Oh, it, it lasted for 55 minutes, almost there. Oh, she's back. You can start again, Melanie. So I was saying, you talked about documentary films, and I also want to make a next experimental type of documentary film. And I'm following with the same theme that I had in my film. And what I want to do is talk about how you can make your body yours, reappropriate your body, sensuality, and uh, disobeying. And I, it is uh, a very feminist film. And what I'd like is to integrate, since it would be tackled by using uh, the speech of uh, the story of uh, Lily to the uh, first woman who didn't want to submit to uh, be submissive to Adam, Adam's first wife. And these are there would be testimonies of uh, people who would have been uh, uh, who would have suffered from rivalries between women. So these are ideas I have. And uh, I would, I'd like to bring a poetic dimension to all of that. It wouldn't be just testimonies of, uh, uh, of their stories, but it would be readapted. And for the time being, I'm looking for producers who would be sensitive to these causes, these issues. And I also am a tattoo artist. <laughs> Usually what I hear is that directors, when they're in festivals and they see other people's work, this can be an inspiration to them. Of course, uh, festivals are there to celebrate films, but I'd like to know if uh, through these virtual festivals you do have this feeling of uh, not a strength, but something that uh, brings some kind of inspiration when you look at other people's work. Yes, it's always the case for me at Clermont-Ferrand Festival in France. And this year, usually there are not a lot of uh, animation films, but uh, there's also, I saw different uh, films, a short film, feature films, and very inspirational. So there were very beautiful films this year, and as every year, in fact. I believe I, I really liked Clermont-Ferrand this year. There was a film called, it was Geoblocked, and others. I think that really Clermont-Ferrand, the selection there is uh, exceptional. It's, uh, it was great because I, I look at it on a big screen. I try to have the best conditions to look at the, the films and therefore 
for me, yeah, Clermont-Ferrand is clearly the best. I'd like to remind you, if you have questions, please post them in the chat. Julie or Melanie, perhaps? I think it's just as Reza. I'm more inspired by uh, uh, feature films, uh, not animation, but uh, the selections in short films festivals. We have the occasion to see different types of films, uh, animation and non-animation films, but of course it's very inspirational to see other people's uh, work. It's We just can't imagine everything, and that's a food for thought really to, to watch other people's work. I think it's interesting to have these discussions. I had a few at Clermont-Ferrand, but uh, what's interesting is just to be able to speak with people who make films and to hear people telling you, yeah, I saw your film. It's also very moving. And uh, this is why we travel to different places, Zagreb or other places. I hope it will happen to you too, uh, Melanie. I think that it takes so much time, in fact. And after a while, what we're doing seems uh, almost uh, immaterial. It doesn't seem very meaningful. And uh, because everything takes a lot of time, there are different steps. And going to festivals with a film, this is what gives meaning to what you're doing. And you say, oh, there are people, there's feedback, people are watching the film, something is happening. And it's just, I didn't spend all this time in a cave for nothing. And uh, sometimes it's difficult. I feel my film is unfinished uh, because there wasn't a premiere. I feel that uh, I don't know what's happening and it's complicated. So I watched some films at Anima because I'm in Belgium, but it's not necessarily animation that uh, uh, ex is exciting to me. Sometimes documentary films from the 80s can be uh, in black and white, made by a dancer, filmmaker, that, who has nothing to do with animation. And I'm not always influenced by animation either. So I think that then going to festivals, seeing other people's films make you want to make more. It also is it's not necessarily the competition, but you feel other people are doing things. So uh, you can tell yourself, OK, it's great. Let's go. Let's continue. The festival is what attracts you, keeps you going. But of course, everything is a bit upside down. I hope things will come back to normal. And I know with my distributor, we're going to send them internationally if possible. And we'll try to go to travel. And it's true that France has a tendency to buy short films, and therefore they are blocked in a certain geography, which could be frustrating for you, of course. Have you seen other animation films or? I think it's uh, blocked. A lot of them are blocked geographically. And we cannot have access to much. Not really. This is why a few people contacted me, gave me the link directly to their film and asked me mine so that they could see, because when they just saw the trailer, they wanted to see the rest of the film. So if people ask, so if people can hear that message, so I really thank you, all three of you, uh, Julie, Melanie, Reza, and thank you for the audience for listening to us, uh, speaking about the film, the career. I want to thank Unifrance for having the idea 
of this discussion and also enabled it. Uh, and uh, we weren't able to celebrate much, but this is a way of celebrate to celebrate French animation with short films. We have three French short films, which is uh, good. Franco Belgian. <laughs> Half French, half Belgian. Yes, it's France as well. It's multicultural, you know. So thank you very much. A great thanks to all of you. Good luck with the future. And uh, I hope the films will be visible on the big screens in the movie theaters. Thank you very much. It's six o'clock and uh, it's the lockdown. It's the curfew now. It's the curfew. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the evening in Belgium, which is great. It makes a huge difference, you know. Thank you. So, in any case, I was delighted to see you and I hope I, we will meet again in festivals. Uh, I've, been fe I've been selected in Belgium too, so, or Zagreb, sorry, so I don't know if you're going to Zagreb as well. No, uh, no, I don't know if it was sent, but it was a pleasure to be with you today and to have this, these discussions for me too. Great pleasure. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks for UniFrance for organizing this meeting. We really need this. It's great. Thanks.